Welcome back to the channel, y'all. We've got a full build video for you here today, and we're gonna be going from a bare naked factory bow like this to a fully rigged, ready to hunt compound deer slayer. Let's make it happen. This is where it all starts right here in the cave. And we're going to take our bear bow and turn it into the one you saw over here. So I've got uh, two new bows this year. Bowtech hooked me up with two bows, which is really neat because I have the opportunity to set up two different styles of bows. You know, I've gone down an archery rabbit hole this year. Uh, my number one goal is to get a, a deer with my trad bow. This guy right here, okay. Just get a deer. I don't care if it's Bambi. I'm gonna be crying if I actually get a deer with that. Obviously, compound bows give you a much bigger range. They give you many more opportunities. Two different setups this year. I've got my blind bow. Um, my blind, and basically, if I wanna get in a real tight little tree stand situation, this is the bow I'm gonna go with. This is my CP28. So that's a 28 inch axle to axle. Um, I've got no peep on here. So this is, I've made this to shoot uh, low light inside of a dark blind. Basically, it's got a shorter uh, frame to it, so it's easier to draw back in a blind. This is a really cool bow. Um, this bow is a little bit longer and it's gonna be a smoother draw, which I really like. Um, the shorter axle to axle, the, the heavier it's gonna be right out of the gate. So if you're in a blind and you don't have to worry about a lot of movement. Uh, you're not sitting up in a tree or stalking situation where you, you're around a lot of cover. I can just go ahead and put a lot of muscle into that bow, kind of change my draw to get some leverage on it. This is uh, gonna be a much smoother draw, and that's what I really like. I would I'd rather have a lower poundage, smoother draw um, for making longer shots, for being really sneaky and having to just draw straight back real slow. It's the Solution SS. It's one of Bowtech's new bows. Let's get this thing shooting some arrows, y'all. First thing I'm gonna do is take this, uh, this little brass speed knockoff. Uh, I actually thought that was like a center shot marker. You know, this is my, this is part of the journey, learning all this stuff. I called Bowtech, I was like, hey, what is this for? Is this, is this marking a center shot? Should I be putting my arrow? And they're like, no, that's literally just from the, the factory test. Next step is adding our rest. And we're actually gonna be flinging arrows out of this thing pretty soon. I like to go ahead and get the string stretched out, start seeing how the arrows are flying. For our rest, we're gonna be putting on a ripcord drive cage, and this is going to be um, limb driven. We got something to put our arrow on now. I'm not gonna tie this down just yet because we need to uh, measure how our arrow is sitting on the rest to get it level. So the big thing that I'm looking at is these two holes that are in the riser right here, right in the middle. And I basically want that arrow to intersect those holes evenly. I want it to go straight across those holes. When I'm looking at everything dead level, which I gotta get this bow level while it's sitting in my little vise here. This isn't a bow vise either. This is literally just a uh, bench vise that I put some leather straps on. Literally after we get that arrow sitting where it needs to be and get our knock on there and get a D-loop, we can go shoot this bow. It's that, it's that, that easy. That's, that's a bare bow ready to shoot. And I like to shoot them bare before I start adding everything else on. All right, bow looks square. I got a cheap little level. <clears throat> I don't know if I fully trust this thing. I really trust the arrows. I got the arrows are flying. Then I'm gonna get some serving material and just put a little loop where it looks level to me. Tighten that up a little bit and then we'll put a little level on the arrow till that looks level. That's pretty close. Okay, everything's looking really good. Going straight through the two holes in the center of the riser. We've got our bubble level right there. 
And I think we're ready to tie on a D-loop now. So we'll leave that little knot in there. So if you do decide to make the leap and get a bow press, do me a favor and be very careful. Because the first time I put a bow in the bow press, didn't know what I was doing, got one for the first time this year, I derailed the bow after messing around with the string. I was trying to do some string tuning with the peep and I didn't put enough pressure when I put it back into the uh, press and string came off the, the cams, derailed the bow. Uh, that bow is currently at a bow shop. So make extra sure when you're putting everything back in its place, keep pressure on the string as you're putting it down. Don't want anybody to get uh, their bow screwed up or their face screwed up. So the main thing with a D-loop is you definitely don't want it to come off, that's for sure. So you want to make sure you're doing a proper knot on there. I would say this is probably the most important thing you could learn if you're not even setting up your, your bows by yourself at home. You should just know this because these things get messed up. You know, you get twists in them. This is something you definitely want to be able to do at home. So I'm not going to spend a lot of detail on it because there's a thousand videos on the internet. But the main thing you want is to start with your, um, your main line on this side of the string towards you. And then you're going to put it on the opposite side. Uh, as you make your other knot. You've got this little twist in here and that's going to compensate when you turn your wrist, especially if you're using a hinge release or a thumb release opposed to an index. I've also just tied these little stop knots in here. So it's the measurement of the knock basically is, uh, is the distance between those two. And that's just going to help sit that arrow in place. This tag in right here is going to be on the outside. So that loop is towards me on this side and it's away from me on this other side. The tag ends are facing the outer cams of the bow, the ends of the bow. As far as size goes on my D-loops, I like mine just a little bit longer than probably the average person, but that could be completely up to you. Now we'll go ahead and just really wrench on that thing. It's like three quarters of an inch. So to tie on our cord here to our arrow rest. There's a little rubber sticker that comes with it. I've got that on the bottom of the limb and we're going to feed the string through here. Through that little rubber deal. And that'll prevent the knot from moving around. And then I'm just going to tie a fishing knot, just a small uni knot. And we're going to slide that down kind of center it up, slide it down and really tighten it to where it's not going to slip anymore. All right, I think that'll work. So at this point, it is time to draw back this bow for the first time and then fling about 50 arrows. I'm just trying to stretch the string out so when I put the peep in, it's not gonna move anymore. And I'm loving the draw cycle on the Solution SS. It's smoother, it's more what I'm used to and the bow is firing really nice. Another thing I'm checking out, as I'm stretching the string, I switch from a fletched arrow to a bear shaft, and I'm seeing how this arrow is flying in the air. Flying right, is it flying left, is it up or down? Up and down looks awesome, but it is kicking hard right, so I'm making adjustments to that rest until that arrow is flying like a like a daggum arrow should <laughs> just straight at the target got a little confidence step back to 20 yards just to see if that bear shaft was gonna fly straight all the way through ended up misjudging the distance lost an arrow but that arrow was flying straight and that's what we want going back in the shop i'm just confirming the center shot of the bow with a bow square and the knock is lined up perfectly just putting that level on the arrow seems to really line things up nice the next move for me is I like to add a second indicator on my string, and that is for my nose. I like to set the tip of my nose either on the string, or recently I've started using a booger button or a nose button right there. It's just a second confirmation, and I really like using that with no peep, but I'm honestly just gonna add that second one on this peeped bow just to have that extra security, extra anchor point. 
And to get that just right, I'm gonna put an arrow in the bow, I'm gonna draw back, I'm gonna close my eyes, and I'm going to use my muscle memory to put my tip of my nose right on the bowstring and remember that spot. I'll look at it, I'll mark it down, I'll tie a little string uh, indicator on it, and I'll move that until it is exactly right, and I'll do the same thing for the peep. Using the bow press, I'll split the string equally. It's really easy to see here because I've got gray and black string. Just split that right down the middle and then insert the peep. Draw back until when you open your eyes, you're seeing a good, clear, straight peep. Once I do that, I'm gonna temporarily tighten the peep so we can go shoot this bow some more after we get the sight on. This year, I decided to totally switch it up and go with a single pin on both of my bows. So I'm using this black gold single pin sight. It is awesome. I love the clear picture and it is easier for my eyes as I'm getting a little bit older. So I got the bow and the bench vise as level as I can and then I'm just making adjustments to the sight itself on the first, second and third axis to get everything at a matching level. This is where it really starts to get fun y'all is when you got the sight on the bow and you're flinging arrows and you start getting groups and I'm just making little adjustments to my black gold sight, little clicks at a time until I'm getting those groups consistently in the center of the target. So when I get my consistent groups at 20, I'm just gonna go ahead and take a pencil and I'm gonna mark exactly where my red arrow is on that sight. Then I'm gonna slowly dial this bow out at 30, 40, and then 50 yards until my elevation is looking consistent at that 50 then I'll make my second mark. That's gonna help me determine how much the arrow is dropping and what tape I need to pick out to put on my sight. So comparing my pencil marks to the sight tape booklet that came with the sight, it's looking like we're at 277. And I'm placing the 50 exactly where that red marker is, where my dial was, where I last shot. And then I can dial back to 20 and now we are good to go. So even though I shot like 80 arrows through this bow after it was all said and done, I still ended up getting some peep twist there at the end. So one thing I decided to add as I went back and added a peep tuner inside of there so I don't have to do anything with the twisting of the strings. And one thing I really like about uh, the Bowtech bows is I can check the timing on the cams with the little indicators they have. I don't like messing with all of that. You know, I, I've, I've already derailed a bow trying to mess with peeps. I, I just hate peeps really, but they are just, they help you be so much more accurate at long distance. And then once I got it exactly right and I made little micro adjustments, moving up and down, pulling back a bunch of times and getting used to it, I went ahead and I did my final tie-in of the peep. And I did that real popular, uh, I guess Levi Morgan came up with this, this method. Uh, works awesome though. It really locks that peep in there. So that thing is set. It's not moving now. I still have just a few micro adjustments to make with my little knock tie-ins right here. Uh, I think the knock is it's a little tight right now. It's being squeezed when I pull back. So I'm going to adjust that just a hair. But as of right now, that peep is straight on. And when I pull back, it's straight on. So it's time to add the final touches. Uh, one being a grip tape. When I say we're fully rigging this bow, we are fully rigging this bow here. One final step with the sight I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take this off and I'm putting Loctite on there because I don't need to make any more changes. We're shooting good, we don't want this thing to move. Just squeeze that all over my finger, that gun it but this will get us through the season without having any back outs. So I'm not actually taking the sight off to do this. I'm leaving it on, just doing one screw at a time. And don't think we're gonna have any movement, but we're definitely gonna go, we're definitely gonna go shoot this bow again. Now that we got the peep locked in, sight is locked in for good for the season. JB Weld Permalock Blue. I use that on my scopes and stuff too. Warning, cancer. Avoid contact with skin. Good to know. 
I'm already one leg in with a brain tumor. I don't think a little finger cancer is going to kill me. Stabilizer install, probably the <laughs> easiest thing that we're going to do with this entire bow. This is the QDS 6, 6 inch carbon stabilizer. I also don't normally hunt with a quiver. I don't like the extra weight that unbalances the bow. So I usually stick it on my pack, if I'm backpack hunting, uh, or even my small pack when I'm whitetail hunting or hanging up in the tree or whatever. But I am gonna add the, the mount and everything on this. This one is the tight spot shift lock. So it allows you to adjust this however you want. I like to have it so my, uh, my knocks are not digging into the ground if, if my bow is, is sitting or something. So we're gonna put this on here and adjust it. Tight spot on. Now I'm just going to put an arrow in here and adjust it exactly where it needs to be. I think that is it, y'all. I think that is our mighty Bowtech Solution SS completely done and ready for its final shots at a deer target. What are we sitting at right here? I'm gonna guess 36 or 37 because I shoot here a lot. 39, just a touch over. So, why don't we load an arrow and see how this thing is shooting. Dialing to 39. I actually like to shoot a sight tape that actually puts me a hair under at those uh, longer distances, just because animals like to duck. And if I miss that lung shot, I'm hitting them in the heart. Beautiful. Bow is feeling smooth. There is only one more test that we have to do before we can take this bow to the woods and it be just as ready as that CP28. That is we're gonna take a 30 yard three shot group with field points and then we're gonna put a broadhead on. We wanna make sure that the broadhead is flying just as good as the field tips. So I got 125 grain um, field tips and broadheads. Now, I really don't think we're gonna have to do anything because when we were stretching the string out, we shot those bear shafts until we were lining them up straight. But if we do have to make adjustments, one of the great things about the newer Bowtex is they have that deadlock system. So you can just move your cams left or right until those, those arrows are flying straight and you can get your field tips and your broadheads lined up. All right, moving you guys right here because 30 yards is should be right here. Twenty nine, that'll do. Okay, field tips first. Wow, that was just dead, dead nuts. Pulled just a hair. Something feels a tad loose. But we're right there in that zone. Dead nuts, absolute dead nuts. All right, let's go take a look at it and then we'll put a broadhead on and see how that aims. Our windage is just right. So something that could happen with broadhead is it could shoot low, could have more drag and shoot low. Or what we really don't want is if it's going low and right or right or left or whatever. So that's the main thing we want to check for. I'm going to aim right at that center dot again and see where we go with the broadhead. There may not be that much of a difference at 20. 30 yards, I'll really be able to tell. I, like I said, I don't think it's going to be that bad, but at 30 yards, I'll be able to tell. smidge high. I'm using these AAE Max veins. They're a little big, but I wanted a lot of control on the arrow for, for broadheads. But you don't even realize how much uh, correction those fletchings will do or those veins will do until you shoot with a bare shaft. I mean, it'll come out completely sideways and correct with veins. Yeah, I don't need to shoot it anymore. We're 
done. All right, now for fun. We're grabbing both bows and we're gonna see which one I shoot better with. Solution SS with the peep sight and index release or the CP28, no peep, thumb release. 30 yards, let's see which one wins. We're gonna do the SS first because I've got my index release on. So I'm gonna shoot at the left square for this one. You're definitely in the square right there. Sort of pulled it, but we're still in the square. That could be my release. That thumb release is a little smoother. Not gonna lie, it's a pretty daggum good group. Okay, I feel like this bow is a little bit louder. And this bow is harder to pull back at the start because of that 28 inch axle to axle, but the let off is insane. I'm gonna go center target here. Oh my God, I feel like it just completely goes away. Oh, just a hair high. This bow is just a little bit heavier as well. God, dog it, I pulled it. Solution's gonna, we're gonna win here. God, dog. I got two arrows like real close to each other, just a tad low and I got one high. Peep versus no peep, we're definitely tighter here. Uh, normally I shoot a little bit better. It could have been I just was a little tired on those shots, but I still love not looking through a peep and having that wide open picture um, at close distances. And now we have two bows that are ready to take to the woods and hunt. And you guys got to see me go from literally a bare bow from the factory to a bow that is bear shaft tuned, broadhead tuned, ready to go hunting in the woods. Let me know in the comments which one you would rather take. Man, for me, it's, uh, it is a toss up right now. It really just depends on the situation. Uh, if I'm, you know, short distances, whitetail hunting, especially low light, this is the one I've, I've really fallen in love with. Uh, it is just a little tough on that, uh, the beginning of that draw, but love the let off on that CP28. This bow's just smooth. It's just smooth all around. I feel like it's, it's quieter, it shoots smoother, uh, smooth draw cycle, it's, and it's dialed. It's, it's good for long distances. So. If I've got a situation where I'm stalking and I, I'm gonna have a long shot, maybe elk hunting, something of that nature, I just know I need to make longer shots. I'm definitely taking the bow with the peep. I'm shooting both eyes open on both of these, but there's something about just not having that peep in the way and watching that arrow all the way through with both your eyes. I can't wait to watch this thing hit an animal this season. You better be out there setting up your bow and practice it right now because the season is just around the corner. Y'all can't wait to take y'all to the woods with me. So subscribe to the channel and hit the like button. Maybe you learned something today. Maybe you just enjoyed me fiddling around with bows, but I will see you guys on the next adventure in the great outdoors.